Hey everyone, and welcome to another Scratch tutorial. Today, I'm going to be showing how to add new levels and text and game over animations to the simple platformer. This is an add-on to my platformer that I showed how to make a little while back. So if you want to get to where I am right now with this basic platformer setup and then basic levels, then check out that video to catch up. If you're excited for today's episode, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing. And also leave a comment down below. But anyway, let's get into this tutorial. Alrighty, so I have a few new sprites and costumes. So inside of Paul, I have four new costumes. Paul Particle Zero, which is just like a piece of the apple. Kind of sounds wrong now that I say it. Paul Particle One, Paul Particle Two, and then Paul Particle Three. That'll be for the little game over animation. Then in ground, I just made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different levels. As you can see here, they're just different levels with different shapes. Then I have text and this corresponds to level. So the costume one is for level one. Costume two is is for level two and so on and so forth. And this is just positioned towards the top left of the screen, so it looks like this. Next, I have obstacles, which follows the same layout as ground and text, where one is level one, so we have nothing. Then in level two, I just have a spike in the middle of the screen because there's going to be a spike there, and it just goes on. So to show this even better, if I go ahead and grab level two and copy the ground into the obstacles, as you can see, it lines up perfectly. So this is what I did. I just copied and pasted it into the obstacles, then positioned a spike, and then got rid of it. So basically, anytime the player collides with the obstacle right, it will trigger the game over. And then the text will just switch to the right level, so it kind of tells you a little bit about the level. And as always, if you want the exact sprites and costumes, check out the link in the description down below to check out the final project. Okay, so let's start in the ground. All I want to do is just make this a little more bug proof. So to do that, we want to do wind green 5 click show, and then go to 0, zero. So This will just make it always reset no matter what just in case now we can go ahead and grab this and pull this into the text and now if we click on text it has the same exact code then we want to click and drag these two scripts into obstacles you can now see that it should line up so level one it says this is a generic platformer there's no spikes and then if i go to level two here we go it switches to the wow a spike and then there's a spike here now let's really quick make the ground go to front so that way the ground's in front of the spike so inside of the ground right after the show go to front so now you can see on the third level there you go the spikes are behind now let's make the text do a little cool animation so that way when you switch the levels it'll kind of like slide down which i think will look really nice so to do this go ahead and do a forever loop and then a change y by now we want to add a divided by so this will smooth it out so for me i'm going to do three the higher this number is the more smooth it'll be now we want to add a minus in the left side and then a y position in the right side of that minus then we want to just input the position we want it to go to so if you put zero here this means that this will always smoothly go to y zero so if we run this game and then change y by 25 it'll smoothly go back to this position so that means that when i receive next level change y by 12 and as you can see here now when we switch levels there we go it smoothly kind of comes down and it looks really cool so now that we have that let's make the obstacles work let's add a new custom block called dead i don't know what else to call it so basically we can run this when Whenever we want the game to end. So in this block, go ahead and set the ghost effect to 100% so it hides it without turning off the collision. Then we want to go ahead and make a new variable called clone ID. So this will tell the particles what clone to be and make sure that's for the sprite only. Now we want to set that clone ID to zero and then repeat the amount of particles you have, which for me is four. As you can see, if I click onto costumes, we have one, two, three, four. So repeat four times, then create a clone of myself so it makes a clone for each each of the particles and then change that clone id by one so that way it increments by one last but not least we want to set the clone id to sprite i'll go ahead and duplicate that set clone id to sprite and put it in the very beginning let's make the clones work good so do it when i start as a clone show go to front then switch costume to we need to make it switch costume to the right costume according to the clone id here's how we can do that every particle starts with whole particle then the number that it is so zero one two three so all we need to do is go into code and do switch costume to a join block. Now all we need to do is type in Paul particle on this side and then clone ID on this side. So if we duplicate this and then take out the clone ID and maybe set it to zero, as you can see, click on it, it'll say Paul particle zero. And then we want to go ahead and clear the graphic effects. So now if we start the game and then click on dead, as you can see, it creates all four of our particles. Next, let's make them fall down. Okay, so set the rotation style to left, right, the Y 
y speed to 15. And we can actually use this y speed variable because it's a for the sprite only variable, so it's independent to that clone. Now, set the x speed to pick random, negative 15 to 15. So that will make it kind of move randomly left to right. Now, repeat 50 times, and then once we're done, delete this clone. Now we need to make this move. Now, to make this collide correctly, we need it in a run screen without refresh block. So in the my block section, go ahead and make a new block called particle movement like so and make sure you click run without screen refresh and that will make this work instantly now you want to go ahead and put that define under there and run the particle movement inside of there so now we just need to code the particle movement first start by changing the y speed by negative two so it goes down and then setting the x speed to itself now doing that won't do anything let's make it do friction so just set it to itself times a number smaller than one so i'll do 0 0.9 so that'll make it slowly get smaller now we want to change the y by the y speed and then change the x by the x speed so now if we go ahead and click on this dead block you can see that look at that that is very cool looking now you know look even better is if these particles interacted with the world so what i mean by that is it'll actually collide with these walls instead of just flying straight through them so here's how we can do that we can just go ahead and steal i'm sorry borrow the code from the main platformer script so duplicate this main if else right here and then put that underneath here and then take out the can jump because we don't want the particles to jump and then just to make sure that they are off screen let's check if we are touching the edge then we can delete this clone okay now you can see if we click on the dead block here we go look at that they kind of interact with the world now there's a slight issue if we go against the wall here sometimes it will really lag out the game here we go look at this it's like lagging out all of scratch like look at that fps it's like a whole two well, i'm gonna go ahead and drag this out disconnect this and then delete that put that all together now if we run that dead particle by the side it'll just kind of go up to the top and that looks a little bit better okay so now that we have that we can actually use that block when we are touching the spike now that we have the clones we can have some issues because this when i receive next level will be received by the clone so we need to check if clone id is equal to sprite so only the sprite can do this then we want to go ahead and do when i receive next level delete this clone and go ahead and repeat 10 times just in case so that'll make sure that we don't have any leftover parts particles once we switch. Now we want to go ahead and check if we are touching the obstacles right in this main loop right here then we want to run the dead block hopefully if we test this out and we touch this spike look at that we have a fountain that is because we are infinitely touching it so let's make a boolean type variable to keep track of if we are dead or not to so make a for the sprite only variable called is dead now in the next level let's set the is dead to false because well we're not going to start out dead now we can go ahead and duplicate that block and then in the define dead set that dead to true so all we need to do is check around these if statements and just do if is dead is equal to false so hopefully now we don't have a fountain let's test it out we touch it and it only does it once now once we die it kind of doesn't do anything so in the dead block here let's go ahead and wait one second after we died and then just broadcast next level which isn't actually going to change it to the next level it's just going to restart it because we don't change the level y1 like we do up here so let's test this out now if we touch the spike oh one second later it's restarted but we can't see hall anymore and the reason for that is because we never clear the graphic effects so in the when i receive next level clear graphic effects and show just to be safe if we touch the spike it will do the animation and look at that we respawn and we can keep doing that over and over now here's a little issue that really bothers me if we go to say level three where we have a bunch of spikes here and we go down and then respawn you can see our player teleports from right in the ground it's very brief but it bothers my ocd it's actually a really easy fix so see these movement and costumes go ahead and duplicate those run blocks and now put that right in front of the show and clear graphic effects then up here set ghost effect to 100 so it hides it now you can see that you can't see anything different but if we go to the third level and then we fall in the spikes and respawn there's no more flashing down here it's seamless now that we have that we can change this broadcast next level and wait to a normal broadcast so it's instant so now there's absolutely zero delay for when we start if i'm holding d and we change levels you can see that we just keep on going now the last issue is if we fall into the void we can kind of just chill in there so i want to fix that all it is is another simple if statement so add an if statement right above the if touching obstacles and now duplicate this x position greater than now we want to change this to a 
swipe position. I have scratch add-ons, so I can just right click on it. But if you don't, just go down here and then put that in there. Now we want to change this to a less than and then check if the Y position is less than negative 155, let's say. So if it is, then we can just do the dead block. Okay, so if we restart this game, fall into the void, there we go. We do some particles and then it restarts that level. So for making new levels, you just design your level, name it whatever level you want it to appear. For instance, this one right here, I want it to be level three. So I just named it three and then put it in the third position. As you can see, it goes one, two, and then three. And it's the same for the text and then same with the obstacle. So now that we have this all set up, I'll do a full playthrough of my game. So it says this is a generic platformer. Okay, so I can jump over here, go to this one. There's a bunch of spikes. This is level four. Okay, this is like an illusion level. These two are actually real spike and these are, this is, uh, I don't know. And then this is the end. And as always, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Owen and I am out. Thank you.